Good day folks, welcome to Sport Fishing on the Fly on the Bench. Today I'm going to tie the Canoe Flake Special, also known as the Bazooka Fly. This fly was originally designed for Canoe Flake in BC here. Wonderful pattern, um, imitates the traveling sedges, uh, the pupa stage. So make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. So for a hook I'm using a fire hole stick, 839 size 10, it's a streamer hook. Um, you could use a size 8 as well. Probably even a size 6. The traveling sedges are huge. For thread I'm using 12 aught black uh, classic wax by Semperfly. For the tail I'm using pheasant tippet. For the body I'm using dirty bug yarn and olive caddis by Semperfly. For the rib I'm using Floss and Fluorescent Orange by Semperfly. And for the hackle, I'm using Fish Hunter Ringneck Rump Patch in Heron Grey by Nature Spirit. So I've gone ahead and built a layer, a base layer of thread right down to just about the bend here. And I'm just going to take my pheasant uh, tippet feather. And what you want to do is peel off everything on the sides that isn't even with the ends. Just get rid of all those. Once it's totally um, even, like that, without moving the feather, I'm just going to cut a slip out that I need for the tail, saving the rest for the wing. Uh, quite a short tail, about a hook gape, a little longer. I like to have just a little bit of orange coming off before the first bar of black. Make sure that's right. And then just take a turn underneath it. Next, take your floss. I've seen this fly done in um, different colors of floss. I've fished it in red, um, olive, this bright sort of a yellowy olive, bright green like a chartreuse. Um, but the, I believe the original pattern has orange floss and I really like this color of orange floss. So I'm going with that. So this pattern has quite a history. Um, if you haven't heard of Canoe Flake, it's up by Kamloops, uh, BC. Uh, at one time, I believe the biggest trout on a dry fly came from that lake around the 19, early 1930s. Not quite sure of the date. Um, and it was 17 and a quarter pounds. And how it, what happened was uh, Len Phillips and his son went to um, the lake in 1917 and they didn't find any fish in it. So they took some fish, I believe nine of them from Paul Lake and transported them over there into Canoof Lake. And um, I believe there, it was a group of fishermen involved in it too. And then they went there in 1920 and they found the lake just loaded with giant fish, like 15, 20 pound fish. And it had a huge traveling sedge hatch and that's where this fly originally comes from. I got this information from Anglers Online. It was an article written by Art Lindgren. And this fly is also featured in his book, uh, Fly Patterns of BC. And the history, it was originally called the Pazooka fly uh, when Len Phillips designed it. But somehow it got changed to the Canoe Flake Special, and I'm not quite sure exactly when or who changed it, who changed the name. I'm just going to take a piece of my Dirty Bug yarn. So I've seen the, um, I think the original was done with wool. I've seen it done in different colors, like anything from a bright green to the dark green, like a peacock color green like I'm going to use, to a brown um, color, depending on what stage um, the insect's at. And it's, I've seen it done with lots of different materials, dubbing, um, chenille, sparkle chenille, peacock works good. I didn't have any wool, so I'm going with the bug yarn. Just take your thread back up and do not crowd this head on the fly. You want to leave a good one to two hook eye length right here. I have a hackle and a wing to tie in. 
tuck my material over there. And it's quite a thick body. I could have used maybe two pieces. Sorry, I keep getting my floss stuck in there because my material clip is missing. I have to find it. <laughs> I should have cut a longer piece. And catastone, they're not really thin. They got fat butts on them. So just build it up. You can build it up the way you like. I've got quite a long piece here I'm working with because it is going to take me a while. I could have, like I said, cut it in half and used two. I tried that earlier and for some reason I couldn't get the head right, so I'm going with the one strand. <laughs> Just try and work on the taper. You could use your rotary feature of your vise to do this and it wouldn't take so long. That's what I'm doing, but because I don't have a material clip, I'm just trying to hold that out of the way. I have to order a new one. And then just tie that off. When I did it with Peacock Curl, I used like a good five to six strands of it. I have that one right here. It's got the green, uh, the yellow, golden olive, I guess, rib. I've done some sparkle ones, and this one's using like a brighter dirty bug yarn. Goes away. Next, I'm just going to half hitch this um, yarn. Because I'm going to be brushing it out just somewhat. I don't want it to come undone on me. You could leave it just um, flat like that. I'm only going to rough it up just a tiny bit. I find the more I rough it up, unless you want to really go for it, then the floss tends to sink too much into it and you can't really see the rib. It gets kind of lost in it. I've tried it a couple different ways here and I want to just make it a tiny, tiny bit buggy. Not even hardly enough to notice. And then I'm just going to cut some of it off because I don't want it long at all. Kind of thinking like chenille or peacock curl. Next, just take the floss, build a nice even um, rib here. that off. I'm going to throw another um, like a whip in there. Got some tension problems with my bob in one sack. Keeps slipping on me. There we go. Next, I'm going to take the pheasant rump. Now, I'm using um, the Nature Spirit. It's actually a skin because it has all different sizes of these feathers. I have an actual pheasant um, here myself, but my pheasant, it could be as much as 40 years old, I don't know. It came with my fly tying box, and the feathers are very, very delicate. Um, I've tried the strung pheasant rump. I don't like them as much. They're all kind of one length. You maybe get a couple short ones if you're lucky. So I've gone with the skin. And what I did was I just take the feather and I sort of pull them out without pulling them off. Hang on one sec. I'll isolate one. And just sort of like look at how long the hackle is compared to the fly. You want it to come to the back of the fly. There's different colors of this pheasant rump. There's everything from the gray up here. There's the brown tips. So I'm just going to choose one that's the approximate length. So I measure from here. It's going to come pretty much back as far as I want it to. I'm going to tie it in by the base, wet fly style. Just peeling off some of the flue. 
they're very delicate stems. I'm going to snip this away. Apply wax. I always apply wax when I'm tying in hackle. Tie this in, and I'm leaving a good portion of this base here um, clear so I can turn and orient the feather correctly. So I'm going to take a couple turns in front, tie that down good. Snip that away. Now you could use hackle pliers here. Um, they're quite long feathers. Um, I can use my fingers to do this. I'm going to demo it with hackle pliers. <laughs> Hopefully it works out for me. I don't have the easiest time with hackle pliers for some reason. See, already I dropped it. <laughs> Lucky that didn't break. Turned my feather right around. So you just want to pull the feather between your fingers so they sweep backwards. And then around without turning it. Bring it around again. These are definitely the nicest feathers I've found for doing like any kind of a carry special type fly because otherwise I tie them on forwards because they're usually too long and then I brush them back. I'm just going to tie that off. So I fished this fly for the first time I went to Canoe Flake, um, I think it was around 2004. And um, this lady that came to that, it was a Fish BC fish in. She was kind enough, she tied about 120 of them, gave one to everybody. And I fished it all weekend, I didn't catch anything on it. <laughs> but however, and I fished it a couple more times after that and never caught anything on it. But now I think I know what I was doing wrong because I've had lots of success with it now. I wasn't letting it sink long enough. So in the article by Art Lingren, he talks about th that. There's a quote in there, something about you're supposed to cast out the fly, lay down your rod, light your pipe, smoke half of it, and wait for the fish to wallop it. <laughs> and that sounds about right, how I have success with it. Apart from the smoking the pipe part. I'm just going to spin my thread here to flatten out this little piece of feather. Got one little short one. I'm just going to pull that out of there. Next, I'm going to take my pheasant tip it again. And it's not a huge wing. Um, same as before, I'm going to hold the ends, just snip a slip out of there. quite far back. I've seen it a lot shorter too. Um, the original Pazooka had quite a long wing on it so that's how I'm going to do it. Definitely want to wax this. Both materials are slippery. Um, well the classic wax isn't too slippery. The nano silk's more slippery to do this with but it, it definitely helps. This, this stuff is pretty slippery. Pretty slick. So you just want to catch it. I'm going to pull it so I don't have to trim it. Got one little piece there that keeps coming in front. I have to pull that one off. Going down to the bottom here, and I'm going to work my thread back up. Doesn't have a giant head on it. Now, if you find your feather, uh, your thread doing that, see how mine's slipping like that? I'm just going to apply a little bit more wax to it, and that's because it is a really slippery material to work with. Pheasant feathers, pheasant hackle, 
I found is mostly off to the sides. I've got one straggler here I'm just going to pull out on my side. And then whip finish. Snip that away. And I don't want a UV head on this fly. Um, I want it to look more natural, so I'm using Loon Heart Head. And I'm just going to apply a little bit on there. more. Oh, I got too much. There we go. And that's it, the Canoof Lake Special. Beautiful lake if you ever get a chance to go up there. Sorry, I was just flattening that out a tiny bit. Oh, it's an absolutely gorgeous lake. I think it's got like five islands in it or something. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. And it's worth going there just for the, just for how gorgeous it is and how much structure it has. Um, I'm, I'm hoping to go back up there next year. So to watch all of our latest sport fishing on the fly episodes, including uh, season 26 coming up, and to order sport fishing on the fly merchandise, you can head over to our website at www.sfotf.ca. Make sure you subscribe and hit the thumbs up button if you like the Pro Step Bench videos and the classic shows we have here on YouTube. Thanks for joining me on this edition of On the Bench. Take care, everyone. Conserve the waters and tight lines.